Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to a little chromatography fun. Um, so here's our we do problem. I have serine and the structure of serine, and I have um, glycine and the structure of glycine, um, and serine and glycine are both amino acids, where serine is polar and glycine is nonpolar. Polar parts nonpolar parts. Okay, um, The two amino acids are not labeled and must be identified. So what this means is I have two samples of these amino acids and I'm trying to figure out which one's which. Okay, Explain why thin layer chromatography is more appropriate than paper chromatography in this case. Okay, so for A, what I think of first for um, paper chromatography is, so paper chromatography separates colored mixtures. And in AP chemistry, we usually um, look for our colored mixtures to have to be D block metals with single electrons. Okay? So the colored things I'm looking for are D metals with single electrons. or iodine. Okay. So paper chromatography separates colored mixtures and whoops. These amino acids don't seem to be colored. Thin layer chromatography can separate, can yeah, separate and ID colorless solutions. Ah, I just misspelled solutions. Uh, solutions um, with UV light. Or ninhydrin. I don't think you actually have to know that it's ninhydrin, but as we talked about in the notes, um, you saw that uh, there is a spray you can put on amino acids to make them show up. Okay, there you go. So the uh, main point is TLC. Oops, thin layer chromatography can separate an ID, ID color solutions with UV light or ninhydrin. Notice how I had to mention both parts, okay? I had to talk about thin layer chromatography and paper chromatography and make that um, setup clear. B. Describe how to set up thin layer chromatography um, experiment that will help identify the two amino acids. Okay, so um, there's two ways you can do this. The one way is with an ninhydrin spray, as I mentioned, or what I think will be more universal, which is what I'm going to write down this time, is just using the UV light. Okay, so a thin sheet of plastic, and it doesn't have to be plastic, it could be other materials, um, but it will be coated with a very polar substance. Okay, um, and sometimes I think it's helpful to have one of those substances in your head um, to understand. And you just say, I'm going to go to the drawer and get, um, and I'm going to put parentheses here, I like alumina. It's fun to say. Um, I gave another example that could have worked um, before, too. But I'm just going to go with alumina. If you know one, you're probably all right. Um, with a very polar substance. Um, and the two samples... are placed near the bottom of the sheet. Okay. And whoops, and labeled with my very favorite um non-moving substance um pencil. So we've got in there, we basically take this sheet, it's already coated, 
Um, we put our samples on there, we label them in pencil, we make sure they're, they're even with each other, and then what you do is, so this is kind of step one, step two, uh, place this sheet, in a solvent that will fluoresce, one of my favorite words, in UV, whoops, that's a U, V, light. Just touching the sheet. at the bottom. Now you see how this gets kind of icky and a lot of times AP chemistry loves them some pictures. So this is where a picture would and it might even say in the directions that you can draw a picture if you feel that helps. So here's uh, the little beaker thing. Here's your thin layer chromatography and you start just like that. Put a little lid on it. right? So hopefully your paper isn't as ragged as that part. But there you go. Too much, too much caffeine gets me the shakes, I guess. Uh, I'm testing at the bottom, just below the label sheet. Okay. Then step three. Time is allowed to pass, and this is where um, because we can't see to pass, um, we can see um, the solvent climbing up. Time is allowed to pass until the leading edge of the solvent is near the top. Okay. Um, and then once you do that, um, step four, shine UV light. I suppose you can take it from the container um, on your sheet and mark in pencil the dark spots. Now this is where that ends the process of um, thin layer chromatography. The analysis is where you have to measure it and things like that. Um, or actually, what do those spots mean? So, um, shine UV light on your sheet and mark and pencil the dark spots. I guess number five is measure. I suppose we should do that. The distance of the solvent's travel and the Um, samples travel from your original sample location. Okay, so there you go. I suppose five steps will be enough, and that's the uh, part that we had to do for um, the lab itself. Next is draw a chromatogram that would represent what we know about the two amino acids. So now this is just the chromatogram is the finished product of it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is draw myself a little piece of paper, draw myself my starting line, draw myself my ending line. I'll make it dashed. I should use different colors, but um, then I'm going to have a smaller, well, I'll put a little dot here and a little dot here. And I'll label this serine. And I will label this glycine. And serine, if you recall, was polar. So way back up here, um, we have in the question, serine and glycine are both amino acids, where serine is polar. Okay. So remember, serine is polar. And we have a thin layer of chromatography where I have a super polar um, background substrate that it's stuck to. It's only going to move a little bit. A little bitty serine. Whoops. A little bitty serine. Moved a little bit. Okay. Glycine, which is nonpolar, will move faster. It won't be as attracted to the thin layer that's superpolar, so it will move faster. There's glycine. There it is. 
and that's it. And there's your chromatogram, and that's all you need to know. So I hope you enjoyed it. Toodles.